All right, today we're going to be installing the 360 Sprint system onto this John Deere Gator. We'll take you through the inst installation guide step by step, pointing out everything that needs to come off the machine, everything that needs to go back on the machine, and how you install it in, in that sequence. Step one, we're going to remove the gator bed, the actuator that hoists the bed, and the harness that comes with it. Uh, and then you'll be able to store that where you want uh, in a safe location while you're using the 360 Sprint system. Um, first thing we'll do is we'll raise the gator bed so we can get access to the actuator and the harness. Disconnect the harness from the actuator. To do that, we have to clip a zip tie to you. So <clears throat> next we'll, we'll start pulling pins from the actuator to get the actuator out. I'm actually going to, I'm gonna retract the cylinder while it's plugged in so it's just a smaller space clean. Place the pins in the actuator, or however you, you can put them back in the, the gator as well if you like. Just as long as you don't lose them. Next we'll loosen up the, the bolt, hinge bolt for this. like we've got a harness that's connected here too for the lights. So we're going to take that loose, disconnect as well. I'm going to close the bed here, down, take the bolts out. the hinge bolts are removed, uh, grab a buddy, grab a fork truck, uh, and to, to take the bed off and put it in a place where it's going to be safe and, and free from, from damage. Now that the gator bed is removed from the gator, uh, the next step is to install the tank mount brackets. We have a right and a left side, and we have a hardware kit, 530901, that we'll be taking the, the bolts and spacers from to, to do the install. So to install the right hand tank mount bracket, you've got a couple spacers and a couple bolts that go with it. Uh, uh, the two different spacers, one's a little smaller diameter, and it's a little bit longer. It actually goes into the, the frame rail here of the gator. <coughs> then the other one you can put in after you get the bracket on to the, the frame rail. Uh, that one first needs to go in just because it's, it's going to be captured by, the, by our bracket. Um, there are a couple uh, spots where you, you need to remove the harnessing from the, the frame rail. There, uh, there's a fir tree zip tie uh, inside of the rail and a couple other buttons that hold relays that will we'll zip tie out of the way when we're done. Once you get the bracket down over the space, you take your three inch flange bolt slide it through, put a washer on the back side, then you have your, your nylock nut. These will take a uh, 9 16 wrench and socket to tighten down. Before we tighten that though, we'll take the other spacer, the shorter spacer, and we'll place that in behind here. And the same thing back here. We'll take the same 3 inch flange bolt, slide it through the spacer, washer and lock nut on the other side. Alright, now we'll tighten the, the 3 inch flange nut um, with a 5 8 inch socket and wrench. And we'll repeat what we did on the right side over here on the left side. 
looks like we have another harness in the space that we're gonna put the bracket. So we'll just take that fir tree zip tie loose. We'll zip tie that out of the way later. Put our longer spacer into the hole. And install the bracket. Try and line them let holes up so that's It's time to, time to uh, install the spacers for the wheels to get your, your spacing on 60 inch centers. One thing to note, the rear spacer is a little bit taller than the, the front spacer. So be sure you put the, the shorter spacer on the front wheels and the, the larger spacer on the two rear wheels. So we'll start by removing the, the right hand side uh, rear wheel first. Um, something handy, we have a forklift here, but obviously you can use a jack or whatever you got around the shop. So we'll we'll uh, we'll start by uh, taking the the lug bolts out of the out of the wheel and uh, installing the the wheel spacer. So we'll put the spacer on here uh, using the same lug screws that uh, that came with the wheel. And we'll just uh, we'll put the wheel back on with with new bolts that we sent in the kit. Now that we've got the first spacer installed, we'll go ahead and do that to the other three wheels. Okay, now step three is done. We've got all the wheels back on. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and install this rear hitch for the tank and frame assembly. So we slide it through so that the uh, first hole lines up with the, the hitch mount hole. And we'll take our hitch pin Slide it through, powder pin on the other side, and that completes step four. Okay, the battery harness is in this 530904 kit bag. Uh, we'll take that out. Get ready to route, install this. Your battery harness, you fish the, the positive line down through the top, over top of the battery, and down to the, the positive terminal here with your half inch wrench. Um, go ahead and tighten the nut back up once the ring terminal is installed. And we'll come back up and get the negative line connected. All right. In order to connect the ring terminal to the ground, um, grab a 5 16 inch wrench. You'll have to reach around, look down through here. It helps to have a flashlight and loosen the um, and loosen the self-tapper screw for one of these ground lines, so you can add our ground line, the sprint ground line, to the to the uh, connection. Now that we have the battery harness installed, it's time to install the main harness to the cab. Uh, we're going to need an inch and five eighths hole saw to drill a hole uh, in the back panel here. We're gonna go about five and a half inches over from this, this inside wall here, and about two and a half inches down, so about centered on this, this height here. Now that we've drilled the hole, um, we're ready to install the harness. Uh, you have a 12 pin connector here. It's gonna go through, uh, it'll ha actually have a cap on it. Take that off, that's gonna go on the outside when the, when the uh, sprint is not connected to the harness. Um, there's a nut and a uh, lock washer 
uh, that you remove from this end as well. So we'll stick this through and we'll, we'll thread the lock washer and nut back on to fasten the, the harness to the, through the hole. That as tight as you can with your fingers and be good. And put the cap and the loop back on the outside. You can lift up the passenger seat to route this harness underneath into this groove here. Get the seat back. And you'll have plenty of harness here to um, connect up to the box when we go to do that installation step. Once you've got the battery harness installed, it's time to put the tires onto the tank and frame assembly. And uh, then we'll get ready to install the whole tank and frame assembly back onto the gator. So first thing we'll do is, uh, for step six, is remove the lug nuts here on both sides. And we'll install each one of these tires. Now the, the wheel assemblies here are uh, sold separately. Uh, you, you'll have to work with your, if you haven't already, you'll have to work with your uh, John Deere dealer or uh, a way to procure the wheel assemblies that, that match your, uh, your gator or how you want it to look. Depending on which wheel assembly you got from your dealer, you may have to pull the hub cap off uh, so that the, the wheel can be mounted onto the, the hub that's on the sprint. The, the lug nuts you just removed from the, the axle, uh, we'll use those to put the wheel back on. Be sure to torque them down to your to the manufacturer's torque. First side's on, we'll go around to the other and install the other tire. Okay, now that we've got the wheel assemblies installed onto the tank and frame, it's time to put the tank and frame onto the, the gator itself. If you have an extra set of hands, now would be a good time to grab them to help you walk this over. Uh, otherwise, you can use a fork truck to uh, place the, the tank and frame on the back of the gator. Doing this part of the assembly alone, um, what we found works best is if you take the, the bolt and the small washer from your isolation mount kit that actually attaches the, the tank and frame to the gator brackets that we previously installed, uh, take the top bolt and small washer, put them into the bracket on the tank and frame, That should help you align your tank and frame to the gator mount brackets. As you bring the tank and frame to assemble to the gator, just before um, lining it up with the, the mount holes, you want to reach in and connect the harness, the 14 pin main harness. Um, be sure that you have about 18 inches of slack sticking out of the tank and frame for the 14 pin harness. Uh, get the tank and frame within about a foot of the gator. Uh, reach down and um, connect the 14 pin harness. It's a keyed connector and it's got a, a nut to, to lock it in. While you're in there, come over to the right side of the gator and connect the main tank and frame harness to the battery harness that you installed previously. Um, at that point, you're free to continue lining up the tank and frame with the gator brackets. Before we fasten the, the tank and frame to the gator itself, uh, we want to install these linkages. What these linkages do is that it ties the, the bracket we installed in the hitch previously to the, the back of the, the tank and frame, and it'll end up distributing most of the weight to our, to our rear axles, um, giving, it, giving the whole machine uh, a better balance. Uh, we'll go ahead and install the linkages now to the tank and frame uh, with the linkage and this three quarter inch pin, about four and a half inches long. And then we've got a little snap ring um, pin that, that goes into the end of that. So we'll go through and do this on both sides. Uh, for now, it's just to the tank and frame. We'll come back and attach it to the, the lower hitch bracket at a, in another step. Now that you've got your linkages installed to the tank and frame, it's time to isolation mount the, the tank and frame to the gator itself. Um, Follow the steps, uh, step 7D, I believe is the one. Uh, it'll show you the layout pretty clearly 
each, each piece of this isolation mount. Uh, leave your isolation mount assembly loose and then go over and do the other side. We're going to move it to the front of the gator uh, and install the boom. Uh, in order to do that for this particular model um, and for others that you may have, uh, you'll have to remove any front accessories that you've got already installed on your gator. So in this case, it's the, it's the bumper bar here. Um, get a couple of screws to remove here, some bolts that go on the side, and we'll just take that off and store it with the, with the body or the, the dump body on the gator as well. Um, now, now that we've taken the bumper off of the gator and all the attachments are off the front, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and install the, the boom mount into the hitch. Uh, before we, we slide that into the hitch mount, we do want to install the winch uh, mount bracket onto the boom mount. Uh, a couple things to note about the, the winch mount itself. It'll come with the strap spooled around the, the winch and zip tie. Just cut that loose and route it underneath the, the roller here. So it's, it's all the way out and uh, underneath that roller. Um, also, uh, install the, the winch harness, uh, positive lead to the, the plus and the ground to the negative. So we'll just use these uh, two U-bolts to connect the, the winch mount bracket to the, the boom mount and flange nuts to secure that and tighten all those down. There are slots in the winch mount bracket itself, so it's a little adjustable. If you get it up there and you, you find that it's uh, interfering at all, uh, you can loosen your flange nuts and adjust it appropriately. That's done. Um, you'll have to fish this through uh, underneath there when, when we get this installed, but um, we'll slide this up to the hitch mount. Slide this guy in here. Careful with your harness there. Slide it all the way back and then use your 5 8 inch hitch pin to line up the holes. Secure that just like you would a receiver. So that's that's in there. Uh, now we're going to use these flange bolts and some more flange nuts to secure the mount bracket to these brackets that are on the gator. All right, while these, um, leave these loose, and while they're loose, we'll install these support straps. There's one for the right side and one for the left side. Um, the way they go on are three bolts up front here that match up there. Then there's a U-bolt that goes over a tube underneath the, in, inside the gator uh, structure there and comes back down inside of the, um, the strap to tighten it up. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, now that we've got everything loosely installed, we're going to go ahead and tighten down the, the U-bolts underneath, the three bolts on each side, and then the, the two bolts that, are, uh, that we installed first uh, loosely. Once you have everything tightened down, probably a good idea to, to stick the half-inch bolts 
stop bolts into the front end of the boom mount. What this is going to do is keep your boom from dipping down too far. So you can you can adjust these as you see fit uh, to your planter, um, which we'll talk about after after the full install. Once your stop bolts are in, uh, you can go ahead and install the boom itself. And to install the boom, you're going to use two pins on each side. Once the pins are in, use these ring pins to lock them in place. Once you have the boom installed, you can wrap the strap from the winch around the, the dowel here, bring it back down, and we're going to connect it with another one of these uh, 3 8 inch pins. What you're going to do is you're going to start through the hole in the winch mount bracket, go through the strap itself, and then through to the other side, and use another hairpin, cutter pin to, to lock it into place. Now when the electrical uh, is hooked up for the winch, we'll be able to tighten that up, and this is what we'll, we'll be used to raise and lower the, the boom itself when in operation. Okay, now that we've got the majority of the main components installed, it's time to start plumbing up the water, the air, and the electrical. Um, first things first, we'll, we'll start with the two inch water line. It'll come off this electric ball valve and T. Um, we're gonna, you've got a, a bulk uh, hose here that, was, came, in your, that came in your kit. Uh, we're gonna install the, the straight barb on the end with the, with the uh, band clamp, T-bolt band clamp. Um, connect it to the T, measure it out, and then uh, we'll cut it to length once we get it up there. So you'll, you'll install the, the barb, the band clamp, you've got a, a V-flange uh, clamp as well, and it'll take a sealer, a gasket that goes in between the two, two pieces here. So we'll, we'll install that here next. Once you get the connection made at the T, the ball valve, um, the next connection is going to be putting this, this sweep, 90 degree sweep elbow on. You're, you're going to want to cut the hose uh, to about 44 inches length and that should get your, your elbow to be sitting right, right between the, the, uh, the fender here and the back of the cab. Okay, once you have the hose cut to length and the 90 degree sweep installed onto the, onto the end of the hose, um, we'll, we'll make another hose, we'll take the rest of the bulk hose, put the uh, straight barb on it, connect it, and then we'll route it over top of the cab and down to the boom. Once you've got the, the hose that goes over the top of the cab connected to the hose coming from the, the ball valve, um, we want to secure that, uh, and we'll do that using a P-clamp. And we're going to attach the P-clamp into this, this bolt here that's on the, the cab itself. The bolt on the cab of the gator uses a T40 Torx bit. Um, get in there, pull back that out, we'll wrap the P-clamp around the, the hose assembly, and uh, put the screw back into the, into the cab. Okay, once you have it 
connected at the elbow here. Uh, we're gonna go up and over the cab, come back down and put another P-clip on this bolt of the hinge here. So same tool, um, same P-clip. We'll route the hose through there and then on down to the, the front of the boom. Once the P-clip's attached on the front hinge, we're gonna continue riding the hose down here. Uh, we'll cut it to length about here, put the, uh, the straight barb fitting into the end of it, and then connect it with a, a gasket and the, uh, the V-flange clamp. Okay, we've got the boom, um, the hose routed all the way from the, the tank to the boom. Uh, the next thing to, to do on step 12 uh, is connect the air lines. So we've got a purge line, and we've got a release line. Uh, make sure we're keeping track of which one is which all the way through the route. Um, what we'll do on both of these is actually cut them here at the, the, the tank to gator connection. So that, that way you can pull this off and just, just quick disconnect. Uh, but then we'll, we'll route those lines up and over. So it's important to make sure you, you remember which one, um, which line is which. So uh, for that reason, let's, let's just route one line first and then we'll come back and route the other. You have a, a bunch of line that should be zip tied to your, your, uh, your tank here in some fashion. We'll disconnect that and we'll work on the release line first. Just gonna make a, a cut here right at the joint. And then we'll take one of these quarter inch air uh, connectors, uh, female to female. Put it on one side. Connect the line you just cut to the other side. And then we're gonna route this along the, the hose up and over the, up and over the cab. The release line is for uh, the, the connect and disconnect uh, to the planter. It, it, it'll route to uh, the air cylinder on the front of the boom, and um, it'll, it's what allows you to, to disconnect as you're, as you're done filling the, the planter. So we'll route this up and over on the, the water line and uh, connect it to the air cylinder. One thing to note, uh, hold off zip tying anything because we'll route the next air line um, and we'll zip tie everything all at once. Okay, as you're routing the hose, the uh, release hose down the, uh, the water line, um, you're gonna notice on the boom there, there are two quarter inch air lines. One of them's coming out of the, the, the tube on the boom. That is your release line, that's the one we're gonna connect to. Uh, the other one is for your pressure gauge, which we'll, we'll route at another time. So uh, we'll cut this to length, we'll use another one of those connectors and uh, fasten them together. Now that we've routed the release line, we're, it's time to route the pressure line. Um, we'll route it the same way, up and over the top of the cab. Okay, so following the pressure line all the way forward, we're gonna connect it directly to the, the 90 degree fitting on this pressure gauge here. What that's gonna do is give you the pressure of the tank uh, so you know that you're ready to purge when the time comes. Next, we're gonna install the vent assembly. This will come to you in pieces, so you have to assemble it to the diagram. Uh, one thing to note is make sure on the check valve that the arrow is pointed towards the T. Uh, so I've got it put together here. I'm gonna go ahead and install it on top of the tank in the, in the fitting that's, on, that's open duct taped right now. The last part of the vent assembly is uh, installing the, this elbow on the inside of the tank. It acts as a baffle for sloshing uh, so that as you're, as you're going, it's not gonna be a direct shot out the top of the vent. So we wanna make sure that the way we install it is one, one side or the other of the machine.
Next step 14, we're going to go into the cab and install the switch box. Okay, once you have the, the switch box installed, go ahead and uh, make the connection to the harness that we routed previously. It goes through the firewall and will get connected to the, the main harness in the back. Um, you, can, you can tuck the harness away as you like. Um, really just make sure it's not in a pinch point where it's gonna get cut or anything like that. The last step of the gator installation instructions is to route the extension harness to the winch. This is the, this is the harness that connects to the battery harness that you installed previously. We're going to route this also along this two-inch hose up over top of the cab and down. Uh, we'll open the, the hood of the gator and we'll route it across the, the, the front there and connect it up to the winch harness uh, that we installed previously with the boom. Once you get it routed, and know what lengths you need, you can come back and zip tie it to the, the two inch hose. Okay, we previously installed the harness that comes off the winch. What we're gonna do, do now is, is tuck this up underneath the, the plastic bumper and into the, the compartment uh, with the radiator. That way it's, it's sitting there for the extension harness that we're gonna route next. Yeah, leave it here for now. We'll route the, the harness coming across here. We can zip tie it to the existing gator harness there. Once you've connected the extension harness to the winch, the installation is complete. Time to power up the compressor and, and uh, make sure everything runs well.